Hi, everyone. We are going to continue our second management chapter, which is project risk management. As an introduction to project risk management, you need to uh, understand the meaning behind it. So the project risk management or risk management is actually the art and science of identifying, analyzing, and responding to risk throughout the life of a project and in the best interest of meeting project objectives. And this risk management is often overlooked in the project, usually because they are focusing on other, other uh, parts like uh, the technical parts, the profit gaining part, but usually this risk management is often overlooked. So what is the importance of this uh, risk management? So at the very bottom line, at the very minimum level, the risk management actually can allow project owners to set up procedures to avoid the risk or to minimize its impact if it's happened <coughs> or at the very least help cope with its impact what it means here so you can do a planning a proper planning to avoid exactly to avoid the risk so if there is a risk you can 100 percent okay avoid it or if you can't avoid it at least you can minimize the impact if it's happened. What's the example? Instead of losing 1 million ringgit, you just lose 1,000 ringgit or 10,000 ringgit. So you minimize the impact. Or at the very least, help cope with impact. Means that you, you already understand the situation. You know it's going to happen. You can't, you need to face it but you are prepared with the contingency plan. If it's happened, what's going to be? So that's, that's the importance of the risk management. <coughs> so what is risk? So here is the, the dictionary definition of risk is the possibility of loss or injury. Okay, loss or injury. <coughs> Project risk involves understanding the potential problems that might occur on the project and how they might impede the project success. They can give impact to the project success. So risk management is like a form of insurance. They gave the example of insurance here. Actually, it is an investment. If anything happens, you have the backup, you have the coverage. If it's not, you're going to face the losses. So the losses can be in terms of monetary or injury. As the example or as the explanation here. So, can you think of some examples of risk? Let's say when you are trying to open up a small business. Let's think of uh, this. Okay, maybe you're going to lose your money. Uh, you know, theft. You have your competition. You have your competitor next door. Who are doing the same business, same same products as you, same business nature as you? Uh, maybe the economic down, like we are in uh, now in the pandemic COVID times. It's very hard times, so you never thought about it. So these are some of the risks. Right? Maybe your vehicles met with the accidents. Any, many, and many, many other uh, risks that can, that can be happened. And uncertainty and risk. Uncertainty implies that future events are unknown. So this is the meaning of the uncertainty. It means that you, you don't know what's going to happen next. Right? So you can't, you can't tell what's going to happen in one minute's time. You know, in, in one minute, what's going to happen? Do you know? So you are listening to the video. You are looking, you are listening to this lecture and suddenly your device off. 
you know you you never imagine that before but of course you can recharge it back right but what if is in different situation in the situation that you are answering your exam or you are doing something like doing transaction for the important uh, you know business and suddenly the the system down there's a risk right so its uncertainty is future events are unknown and then risk can be uh, divided or grouped into two which is positive risk or negative risk so what are they so positive risk uh, yes risk can be positive means that when you take the risk you're going to have a <coughs> positive impact okay like your investment your you open up a small business there is a risk but you're taking it uh, and then we're gaining positive feedback or positive uh, result negative risk is you're, you're taking risk but it's negative right there are people who want to claim for the insurance they burn their own businesses you know and when it's come out in the investigation is there is a unethical action being done so they didn't get the insurance claim so you see what happened there's a risk they lost the business they didn't get the insurance that's the easy example okay next we are going to see the processes that involve in the risk management <coughs> this is very important you should be able uh, to identify each and understand uh, the processes so the first one here is the planning itself. Okay, number one, you decide how to plan the risk management. And then you need to identify the risk. So you need to identify the risk. Let's say you have a project, so you need to plan and then identify what kind of risk that may be associated with your project or in any activities that you are going to inform. So we decide using the risk management planning, we need to find them, which is the risk identification. And then the third process is qualitative risk analysis. Okay, so we are analyzing them qualitatively. Okay, so you have your risk here and then you analyze them. Okay, let's say you have, a, you identify 20 risks and then you do some qualitative assessment <coughs> okay to sort them and then you continue with the quantitative risk analysis this is like you are calculating you do some mathematical operation to measure the risk uh, impact you know so you know uh, you got some input from qualitative risk analysis and you got some input from quantitative risk analysis so then you have the data with you so you can plan the response that you need. So if this happened, what's going to do? Okay, so when you have your planning, okay, here is the action being taken, and then finally you are going to monitor and control the planning that you have, you have done. Do you make any improvement, uh, updates, things, right? So this would be uh, the last steps, which is circle around actually. Okay, if you need to improve, then you identify, is there any other risk that going to happen? If it's the circumstances changes, you know, uh, so we need to repeat this. So you have risk management planning, you have risk identification, qualitative risk analysis, quantitative risk analysis, and then you respond to the planning, and then you monitor and control. So we are going to see uh, the example of uh, each, okay? So we're going to see uh, what are the methods that you can use to identify the risk. <coughs> so this is some of the idea or method that you can utilize in order to identify the risk, okay? Uh, they may have more uh, methods, and you can think of other examples as well. But here we have brainstorming, uh, subject matter experts, you have checklist methods, lessons learned methods, and document review. 
Okay. And I believe the list can continue. So what is brainstorming? So uh, either you are alone or in a group, you brainstorm. Okay, focusing on, so you have to have some uh, information, right? Quantity or quality. And then write everything that you can think on a paper and then come back. Go one by one, the list letter. So you got, okay, if you are involving in your PSM project, let's say your final year project. So you sit, you're going to sit, sit and think, what are the risks? So you jot it down. So, okay, COVID, if it continues, then you can't access to the laboratory. So you can't do the experiment. Okay, you list down. COVID cannot enter the lab, cannot meet the lecturer physically. What else? Uh, you may need to change your topic. Uh, what else? Mm, you may meet with the accident, so you can't do it. Uh, no, we're not praying for that, but you list down everything. Okay, everything. So subject matter experts is usually, um, you know, you are meeting with the people who are expert in the field or in the subject matter, advising you in the list. So you ask people, you ask people who maybe went through that experience. Okay, and then you list down the, uh, the risk. Okay. And then we have checklists. This is a famous tool. You know, you have a checklist, you have a list of items, okay, that you develop through a generic checklist, but you can develop it based on case, which is we're going to be more specific on, um, on the project that we're going to do. Lesson learned. Uh, what, what is written here? A few organizations maintain a lesson learned database. Okay, so they have their, and what they learn from the previous activities. So they have their lesson learned database. Okay, so this is very uh, important. So it's a collection of a project summaries. Okay, it's a record of problems encountered. So the list of what the problems that they encountered way, when they are uh, organizing uh, that kind of project or they are dealing or handling with that kind of project. So what are the mistakes made and what, and what the pro project manager would do differently in the future. So they say, we did this and we think this is better said this year. So when you're looking on that, other people's report, you know, so you are gaining the idea about the risk. Documentation review. So this is involved learning about the project. Okay, you have your technical details, the people, the higher risk will be present in the non-standard tasks that have been, been performed by the organization. So this is by reviewing the document. Okay. Uh, about the technical de detail and people. So if they don't have the experience on that, so there's more because they've never been through that kind of project. <coughs> so this is some of the example. So let's say you, you have utilized those methods, okay, some of the methods here. And then let's say you have listed 50 possible risks. So what you're going to do next? Okay, right here, results from this stage will be listed in risk register. So you are going to compile all the risks that you have identified in the risk register. So we are going to see next what is this risk register. Okay, <clears throat> the explanation are given. Risks are recorded in the risk register, which should be frequently reviewed to ensure that risks are being appropriately managed. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so you have your, so in preparing the risk register, you need to have some description. Okay? You, you should have your risk, risk statement. Okay, means that what, what are the, what are the risks that you are going to uh, explain that? So it is ex uh, given here, the risk statement contains three elements. The event, so what the risk, what, what the event of the risk and the likelihood of it occurring. So uh, the probability of that risk to, to happen and the impact. What's the impact if it happened? Okay, so usually it can be in a statement form like this. Okay, event, what are the event? that may have happened causing what? Or if this 
happened, this happened, so this is the result, and you're going to have this impact. You're going to see the example. Okay, uh, let's say this is the example of the risk statement. A thunderstorm. So this is the event. Might occur during lunch. So what's going to happen? What's the impact? Causing a cancellation of our outdoor lunch session. Right? What else? The other example. If a low pressure system moves across our area. So this is the example for, for each of these, right? This is the first one. This is the second one. Both are correct. Both style can be used. So if a low pressure system moves across our area, so what's going to happen? A thunderstorm may occur during lunch. So what's are the impact? So we're going to leading to a cancellation of our outdoor lunch. So this is the good example because it's covering all these three elements. And make sure uh, you understand on this and you're practicing this because later on you're going to work on uh, risk management uh, assessment which you need to understand all of these steps and also the important points like the risk statement and they also give some poor examples uh, you said what are the risk statement uh, bad weather yes it's bad weather but what are the details so just compare this bad weather with this. It is the same. This is also description of the bad weather, but they give more detail. What's, why the bad weather? So it's thunderstorm. Okay, so what's going to happen? Causing a cancellation. The same thing, poor example of risk statement. Okay, vehicle breakdown. Um, so basically, it's not, not specific enough. So going to show you, this is the example of the risk register. Basically, it is a table. It is a table that been divided to some columns that have some information. Like here, you have your risk that you have identified and you have your consequences if the risk happen and what are the potential response that you may want to do if it happens okay so usually if you do your assessment so make sure you have your good numbers of risk okay so you may have maybe 10 risks or 20 risks that you need to identify and then it should be in in complete sentence in existing structures may be inadequate to support the new improvement. So what's going to happen? Any additional construction, time and cost. What, what are your, the potential response? Engage with experienced consultants. Anticip un anticipated adverse ground condition. What are, the condi what are the consequences? Additional constructions needed. So it's going to need more time and cost. So what we should do if this happens? Conduct thorough soil investigation. Bid price higher than budget allowance. So this is the risk. Let's say going to bid uh, some products or some uh, anything, the project. So uh, it's maybe higher than the you know, budget that you uh, you have. So what's going to happen? It's going to schedule delay and cost will increase. So if that happened, what's going to happen? What you need to do? What's the potential response? So you also may have a list of responses but they are giving one example here discuss with the client and consider the scope reduction because this is the risk that if it's happened okay so this is the example of risk register so the list of the risk that been identified you are going to compile here and then you're going to write the consequences and also the potential responses okay <coughs> so you have for the planning, you identify the risk done, right? Until you store them in risk register. So what's next? You're going to do the qualitative risk analysis. You're going to see this. Okay, so we're going to see the qualitative and quantitative risk uh, analysis. 
So risk analysis is carried out as part of the risk management plan. So why we need to analyze the risk? Because we want to understand and evaluate the identified risk. And then is that risk is worth we dealing with it or not? Okay. So sometimes you we, 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 we need to understand that as well because we may have thousands of risk. Okay. Even uh, you be get bitten by the mosquito also the risk. Okay? Let's say you are doing the uh, exploring the forest for a certain project and then get bitten by the mosquito and then you are planning to uh, how to assess that, how to uh, you know, uh, mitigate the risk, what to do. You know, sometimes you just wear the proper and then yeah, the proper uh, attire and then you just go. If just wandering with that mosquito things, so when you're going to explore the forest or the construction area. So it's risk analysis about understanding and evaluating the identified risk associated with the project and determining which risk event warrant a response. So you may have hundreds of risk event. So if you are going to address all of them, 100, 200, so you're not going to do your project. You're just dealing with the risk. See? So you need to think which risk is warrant a response, which is important. Which one that you need to give focus, which is going to impact your project. So you have your risk register. Here is where you compile your risk list. Okay, and then you need to perform the qualitative risk analysis. You do the qualitative. So from, from let's say 100 or let's say 20, and then by doing this qualitative risk analysis, you have sought them. Okay, you have sought them uh, based on the ranking. Okay, you know the probability and also the impact. Okay, so you list them and then you know, okay, so this is the most important risk that we need to give focus. The others are, mm, okay, just leave it for a while, but this is most important. So you sort it out using qualitative risk analysis. So these three, you're going to take it further to make further analysis, which we can perform the quantitative risk analysis. And then, Go back to your risk register, update it, okay? The project outcome based on the risk. So we are going to see both uh, qualitative and also the quantitative risk analysis. And I would happy to share or to say that the risk register that we have discussed earlier is also a part of qualitative risk analysis. Okay, so this is a part of qualitative risk analysis, but we need to take it to another level to consider or to identify the probability of it and also the impact. So we are going to develop like kind of measure, the PI metric, or we call it probability and impact metric. So this is for qualitative risk analysis. We also have quantitative risk analysis. Uh, which is the sensitivity analysis or decision tree analysis. So we are going, so this is the uh, qualitative risk analysis. And they give you example, the process of prioritizing risk for further analysis or action by assessing and combining their probability of occurrence and impact. So you see here, you have rank the risk, okay? And then this is the risk event that you have identified just now. What you need to do? Develop the probability of it, okay? And also the impact. You put kind of uh, measure, okay? Here we can see number two, three, five, okay? So they have the scale. So this number will give some meaning. So you need to have some description on this probability assessing scale. The same thing goes to the impact. Maybe they have scale one to five, and they have explanation for if one, what are the ex explanation? Five, what are the explanation? Maybe five is the high, very high impact and very highly, high likely to happen. 
one is like it's very low impact and very less likely to happen maybe that's an example so they say potential the project will be delayed the probability is five so they have some information on this and the impact is also high so this is how you 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 put the scale the good example the best example would be a marking rubric for your asset assignment so you did your <clears throat> project management uh, assignment so you have your questions and you also be given a marking scheme or rubric if you look at the rubric you're going to have scales right and you know that's kind of um, the example for for doing this so it's not just putting a number but you have meaning behind this this number which is in relation to impact and also the probability so by having this so you can you can measure okay maybe a pi metrics maybe you can multiply okay uh, so you can multiply them multiply and then you've got the summation here they say here is 25 right here is 10 here is 10 here is 25 here is 15 here is 10 here is 15 so now you can re-rank them based on the highest probability impact measure so which one is more important number one number four okay it's this 25 and what which one is third is 15 okay number five so this one and then this one and then others this 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 so you rank them so you you know which risk that you need to give more priority so this is just example okay this is i'm just giving example just on this slide <coughs> okay this some uh, explanation on it uh, so both quantitative qualitative use risk rating and priority prioritization of risk but qualitative is subject subjective evaluation whereas quantitative is more objective in terms of value and cost okay so just now here is more qualitative because it's based on our um, assess, assessment but you don't have really figures right but here you can have the example uh, risk rating could be five or ten after multiplying okay this one I, I, I just explained it just now but in this example this is another example different example for pi matrix okay you have p and you have i so this is the risk that you based on here let's say you take one two three whatever it is you saw the list risk and then you got some figures you know probability through some assessment some statistic or some surveys you got the data you know it's not based on assumption and then you know if this happened with this 10 percent of probability i mean that it's less likely to happen right because 90 percent is going to success but just 10 percent the possibility of this risk but if these 10 percent happen what's going to be the impact loss of 4000 usd okay so you calculate the uh, emv the expected monetary value the probability impact matrix with 400 okay but the probability is get higher on the second risk but the impact is uh, lower than the first one so how you going to decide on this so you just use pi so you multiply them you got three hundred lose i mean the expected monetary value 25 percent two thousand loss i mean you're gaining two thousand right maybe you should gain hundred thousand or ten thousand but since if this happened you just get two thousand this one is six thousand sixty percent you're going to lose 1.5 k usd so based on this you know which is highest this one right but you also can take them as a as an overall if all of this happen, okay, if all of this happen, we're going to lose minus 4.4. 4, or this is the impact, and this is what the EMV. So you can calculate which one that you need to focus first. Maybe number number four, because got the highest, highest EMV. So this is how it works, okay. <coughs> So next is we're going to see the uh, you know the difference between qualitative and also the quantitative. 
uh, assessment or risk analysis. So what is qualitative? Uh, qualitative usually perform first. Uh, this is performed after the qualitative is done, usually the quantitative, because you, it's the, another level of the assessment. And qualitative, it should be always done. And quantitative can be optional. Maybe it is at some occasion, some event, you no need to do quantitative risk analysis because by doing this qualitative, you already identified the things that you want. And this one exam examines individual project. Uh, when it's complicated, the project that you may need quantitative risk analysis. Usually when it's examined, the combined effect of risk on the project as a whole to determine an overall project risk. This is day-to-day -day risk management is focused on individual project. Here is more to the overall project is important because you want to decide whether you want to take this project or not. Okay, like the previous example, maybe here, although this is individual uh, action, but we sum it up, right? Sum it up to get the, the overall project. <coughs> so for smaller project, qualitative uh, risk analysis will, will be sufficient. Uh, because quantitative is time consuming and you may uh, need to go to uh, invest more and sometimes it's not desired okay for large project you need this quantitative risk analysis and risk scale for qualitative can be textual okay since this is qualitative so the scale like the numbers of things you know uh, it can be textual like low risk medium risk high risk or it can be color coded Maybe red is for danger, yellow is for like 50-50, green is for safe or low risk, or they can also put scale one to five, or they can combine. But for risk scale for quantitative, usually you need to calculate the monetary and also the scale of terms. Okay. So uh, that's the thing. We may stop here and then continue in the uh, continue it in the second part.